Yeah. Hello, and welcome to the LCSC studio. My name is Amber Fast, and I am the art programmer here. So today, we will be painting a wave. I'm hoping that we're going to be about 45 minutes to an hour and a half. <laughs> uh, probably more around an hour. Um, what I want to do before we get started is run through our supplies. Uh, there is a on the Facebook event page on Facebook on our LCSC Facebook page. There is a event page with a description of everything that you need. But I'll show you what we what we need right now. So we're going to want a two inch brush and perhaps a one inch brush as well. These are to fill things in. And then for the flat brushes, you want, you want a couple different sizes of those. So I got all sorts of flat brush sizes here. Uh, this will be more for blocking in and then the details. And then right here, we're gonna have, this is kind of a rough edge, um, more of a hog hair oil brush. This will be good for blending. So something with kind of rough edges here that'll help to scrub in and blend. And then we have a couple sizes of, of the detail brushes and the round brushes here. I have a whole arsenal here, but I just like to have lots on hand, switch things up, but these are what you guys will probably want at home. I am just going to shut this door here, so take a peek at these. Alright, so besides that you're going to want a tub of water to rinse your brush out. If you have it, a spray mister bottle is really great tool to use. If you don't, then I'll show you how to how to work with it without. We are using a couple different paints today. I did give you a list of alternate paints that we can use, but uh, we're going to use, and it really doesn't matter the brand, I'm using a mix of professional and student grade acrylics, even a little bit of craft acrylics. Uh, so we're going to need a white titanium white here and ultramarine blue you're gonna want a phthalo blue so I'll show you here it's easier to see the difference so we have kind of a warmer blue and a cooler blue here and then we're going to use a yellow and a black and if you have it a gray is good too but we can always make a gray with the black and the white. I like to use a palette knife to mix big piles of paint uh, just so I don't wreck my brushes but if you don't have it you don't have it it's fine. All right. Got anybody joining us yet? We have six. We have six. All right well welcome everybody. Uh, if you guys have any questions, we're going to get started probably here in a couple minutes. I'm just going to let people pour in here. But if you guys have any questions or want me to go over the list again of what you need, let me know. And just pop in and let us know if um, we're loud enough, if you need us to be louder, if you um, want the camera to zoom in on anything or um, anything else, let us know. Oh, something else uh, I do suggest if you're going to be doing a lot of painting at home, this palette paper, uh, this one's Strathmore, I got it at Michael's, um, it's pretty awesome. Uh, of course you can use an ice cream pail lid, a disposable plate, um, or a plate if you really don't care about it, <laughs> but these things are great because you can do all your mixing, do all your colors, finish your painting, fold it up, throw it away, and then right underneath it you got a fresh palette. One of my favorites. Um, we are using a little craft paint today just because it's um, thinner and has less pigment. It's going to help me, kind of like a fluid paint almost, it's going to help me uh, thin some things out. But if you don't have it, you don't have, have it. If you have all craft paint, just remember um, 
there's less pigment per square inch uh, in craft paint. We have a lot of fillers in there, so it just uh, might take a couple extra applications of your color to really get that popping color in there. Okay, and we just got a comment if you could be a little louder. Oh, yes, absolutely. I have to project my voice. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Thank so. you, Alicia. <laughs> oh, hi, Alicia. Alicia's a painting buddy of mine. Yeah, we have paint dates where we paint completely different things and we just sit there in silence and drink wine. <laughs> it's nice to have a friend like that. <laughs> um, I also am going to be using um, some tape. So masking tape is good. I got this cute tape. This is going to help with the horizon line. Uh, if you don't have it, a ruler is fine or a really steady hand is nice too. Um, I think what we'll do is everyone ready to get started everyone set up I'm gonna take that as a yes <laughs> <laughs> all right so um, I got uh -huh. this picture Alicia says she misses your paint dates oh yeah. I know someday soon hopefully well you yeah, know yeah we can have zoom paint paint dates so I, kind of, I got this reference picture off the internet. So if you're going to try this at home with a different picture or try something different, I always suggest starting with a reference because especially if you haven't painted water before or the ocean before, you're going to need some idea of the shapes and how to make it flow. So this, you guys are going to follow me, not this reference, so don't worry about it. But uh, this is kind of the base I started out. I did a practice painting here. So I did change up the colors and it is your prerogative to change a little bit of the colors. You don't have to follow the colors get our colors that I go. Try to make them blue at least, blue and green, <laughs> stay within that. But hey, if you have a purple wave, I'm not gonna be mad. Uh, okay, so let's just start off with the sky. <clears throat> We're going to make the sky uh, an ultramarine. So if you do not have ultramarine at home, you can use kind of a medium blue and add a tinge of red to it. So if you look on our color scale here, <clears throat> you got ultramarine blue and you got phthalo. So the ultramarine blue will lean towards the red and the phthalo will lean towards the green. Uh, same with all the primaries. You have a warm and a cool yellow and a warm and a cool Red. Just hold that still for a sec so the folks at home can see that. You gotcha. Okay. So this will be more of our sky color and this will be more of our in our wave. All right, so we have this ultramarine and we need some white. I'm gonna add some of this craft white here just kind of help my paint flow and go on the canvas nicely. And this is my professional white titanium white. You can notice the difference between these right away. All right, so we're gonna grab our two inch brush. We're gonna use this in our arsenal. If you have painter's tape, you're gonna want to put out a line. So horizon lines for oceans, um, they need to be fairly straight to look realistic. What you can do um, is this like I said, use a really steady hand if you do not have tape. I'm gonna measure it out here. So I'm just gonna pick a spot on my pencil, mark it, mark it, mark it. Just in three spots there. So I have a nice straight horizon line. A little tip with your, with your tape, if you don't wanna leave resi residue on your canvas, kind of, Stick it a little bit onto your clothes. Get some fibers on there so it won't be as sticky. All right, so I'm just gonna lay this here. Well, it's upside down. I thought this was the coolest tape, so <laughs> I wanted to have this up here for you guys. All right. So I'm just gonna start by laying down some white. I'm going to add just a touch of water to it here because when you first go onto a canvas, it's 
it pulls at your paint quite a bit. And so this is kind of a trick to help you create that flow, especially when you're blending a sky. You want to get quite a bit of paint on there just to cover it. that covered you can do the sides too that's your preference a lot of people like it better if it goes off to the sides too nice we're hanging okay so I have that going on and then I'm just gonna go right into my blue here and I'm going to maybe add just a touch of white just add it right into there and I'm gonna add it and blend it right onto my canvas what this does some of those little a little bit of nooks and valleys in there kind of create some interest and what you're doing is you're pulling from one side to the other so if you stop here you're gonna get this little nonsense here and you don't want that in your painting so I'm gonna add a little bit more white usually you'll have uh, more white at the bottom than at the top kind of fades it up and then side to side so with your sky once you get a nice color going on and you like it add some more white and the reason I say that is because acrylic dries darker and so if you got a nice beautiful sky and it dries two shades darker it's going to look a little fake I'm just adding those white spots and then blending back and forth I can hit my corners here not going to spend too much time on the sky because we want to focus our attention on the wave but once I get it nice and even then I'm done with that so I use two things I use paper towel and I use a rag first I use I usually use paper towel to get the majority of that paint off before I wash it off in here just because your water can get muddy prevents that give it a little bit of a swipe here and dry it off on my on my rake that way it's ready to go for the next color and of course you find a little spot that's not quite blended and then I dirty it up again <laughs> there we go all right so there's our sky what we're gonna do for the ocean so our, we have a nice green colored wave coming in here and then the ocean you're going to notice is more of that cool ultramarine blue. Uh, the reason for that... Oh, here. oh hi, how are you? Oh, thank you very much. What are you doing? Uh, we're doing a Facebook Live video. Oh, nice. Yes. Right on. <laughs> Do you want to say hi to everybody, Pat? Hi, yo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. He's big. All right, so what we're going to do next is <laughs> all right well we have paper towel now so that's good <laughs> I love Pat so. Pat is our wonderful uh, custodian uh, at the cultural center she uh, stopped by to check in on us and make sure that we were doing okay and had all of our supplies all right here we go okay so normally what I would do is I would let this dry and take some tape and apply it there so I keep that straight line uh, for time purposes I am just going to wrap it in a little bit so I'm gonna figure out where I want I don't want a lot of my sea here so I want my wave to be nice and big so I'm just gonna I'm gonna rough in the it doesn't have to be straight I'm gonna rough in the wave here and have a little bit of dips and valleys in there the reason being, it doesn't come up completely straight. So about here is where I'm gonna lay down uh, some darker ultramarine blue. I do wanna make it a little bit less intense of a color so I can add a little black to it. Let's see, because I got a big old 
on the paint here. I'm gonna actually use my palette knife because you'll notice if you use your paint or your paintbrush to mix this much paint, it's going to climb right up your brush and it takes a while to clean it off. All right, so I kind of have this nice dark blue going on here. And give this a wipe. And I think I'll go into my one inch brush because I have a smaller area here. And again, because this is just a dry canvas, you're gonna wanna add a little bit of water into your paint just to help it flow. Or else you, if you find that, if you find that it's pulling, then it's just so, and it's dry like that, you see that? Then just add a touch more water. You don't want to add too, too much water because what happens is it starts to break the bonds of the paint and it becomes a little bit weaker. So I'm just using that edge of my flat brush just to follow that line there. Picking up paint as it wears out and it starts to pull. All right, I'm gonna come back to this line here. I think we'll come back to it at the end there and make sure it's nice and straight. Because usually what I do is I'll grab onto my canvas and I'll just pick it up and go closer to it. And that way I can carve in a nice straight edge there. We're not gonna do any real detail in here. I just want it nice and dark. And then maybe a little bit closer to, I think I'll put this adding a little white to that little bit closer to the horizon. I'm gonna add just this little bit of white here. Then I'm gonna wipe off my brush and I'm gonna blend it in. What this does is create a distance and atmosphere. So as you go back farther and farther, you're getting kind of a haze going on. gonna bother me that it's not finished but <laughs> that's okay we'll get there Let me hit the sides those following along with me see what I did there <laughs> those following along with me if I do go a little bit too fast just pause me and you can still watch the video after this. All right. If you need um, Amber to say something maybe a little bit louder or you need another um, explanation or another detail said again, just uh, mention in the comment and um, I'll get Amber um, to go over something if you need. And I know there were a few of you that couldn't make it to the live and wanted to do the video afterwards. So if you happen to have questions and you're doing this video after the live, then put them in the comment section. I'll be sure to watch that for at least a few days after this. All right. So now we're gonna get into the meat and potatoes of our wave here. Um, right about here, I'm gonna go fairly straight. It's a little bit on an angle here. So here's the bottom of our wave. Down here, we're gonna paint in a little bit of foam, but we'll do that later. And what I want you to imagine here, we'll use this hump. Just using my pencil, I'm just gonna kind of draw in. I'm gonna cover this up, but I want you guys to visually see where we're gonna get that, that crest of that wave coming over. So you can have an idea of the direction lines that we're gonna use. So we're gonna block in the color, but then we're going to come in and use those direction lines. So it kind of goes like this. All those direction lines are like that. And then of course it goes straight down. So I'll just get, get in there with the camera maybe. Mm -hmm. So you just want to think about the direction lines going like this. Right now, all you really want to worry about is blocking in that color. So of course I, I like to this is why I have a giant cat or a giant palette is because I like to spread my paint out. But I'm gonna use this side here and we're gonna go into our colors for our wave. <clears throat> so you have the sky here and what's happening when the sky or when the water is kind of farther in the back and it's settled a little bit, you're gonna get a reflection of the sky. 
into the water and that's why you're getting those blues from the sky the darker values in here and then when you come into a wave what happens is you start getting that translucent uh, you can almost see down to the bottom so say there's seaweed or a coral reef in there that's where you start getting those green tinges and values right because you got to remember that water is translucent so it's picking up things from underneath from above the reflections so <clears throat> you can get all sorts of colors in your waves well I'm gonna take some of this phalo blue if you have this give it a little bit of spray keep it wet if not I mean sometimes that works too yeah acrylic paint dries <laughs> so fast it, on your palette it really does all right, so we're going to start in with this nice blue color. And I want to make it green. Hmm. So of course I'm going to add in some yellow. Blue is dominant over yellow, so you'll probably need a lot more yellow than you might think to turn this to a nice emerald green almost. Just kind of swirling it around then gathering it back into a pile because if you start going all over the place it's going to thin it out and it's going to dry faster i find paint mixing so satisfying to watch <laughs> it is it's almost meditative all right it's starting to get that nice greenish turquoise look to it maybe a little more yellow and you can go as blue or as green as you want so if you've gone too much on the yellow side, can you just add in Just add in blue because blue? absolutely because we're just using those two colors, we can work back and forth with them no problem. Once you start adding a third color in there, then that's when things get a little crazy for color mixing. All right, so that's nice. That's a nice value here. This will be one of my really dark values. I might save a little bit of it. And then I'm going to add some more of that white in here. What I'm going for is a dark, a mid, and a highlight tone. Well, a light tone. Alright, so I'm going to add a little bit of white into here. Not too much because this is my dark tone. I don't want it to be too, too light. You want a lot of contrast. That's what gives something a nice form and a good feel to it. All right, so that's a good color for my darks. I can make it more green. My other ones were a little bit more green. But I think I'm gonna do a little bit more of a blue wave in here. All right, so then I'm gonna take some of that and I'm gonna add some more white and maybe a little more yellow. So the, the thinner the wave is as it comes up, the more translucent it gets and the more of that yellowy greeny color you're going to get. It's called the eye of the wave that comes where it flaps over right here and you can add in some nice greens and different colors in there. Add some more white. Yeah, that's a nice contrast. touch more yellow in there, green it up. So you, the more white you add, it almost grays out your color. So you can definitely add in a little bit more color just by adding yellow. So it won't darken it. We'll just add that pop in there. All right. And then of course, I'm gonna add, have a little bit more of a lighter value here too. Running low on this one. There you go. Don't worry, I got lots of backups. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And we're going to have all manners of shades in between there, too, that we're probably going to mix them up with our bread or on the painting. Alright, 
that's a good start. Wipe this guy off. How are you doing at home, guys? Do you got your three colors mixed up? How's everybody doing at home with their color mixing? <laughs> All right, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm just going to block in the bands of color. So right under here, or right starting right here, we have a nice, oh, that's too much water on there. We got a nice band of dark and it comes all the way up here. So I'm gonna put that nice band of dark here. And then I'm going to do some mid-tones in here and here. Okay, so add a little bit of water on there just because we're hitting that dry canvas again. We wanna have, we wanna smooth that out. Dark and you're gonna go right over your drawing. If you did draw, you can just go right over it. I just wanted to give you guys an idea of what's going on. So once we get into the details, we're going to have our brush strokes going in the direction of the wave. But when we're blocking things in, that's not a big, big deal. Not as much of a big deal. Too much water, things start dripping. So you just dab your brush off. Water is going to help to keep this wet too, well, because we want to try to blend the other colors in there while we're at it. And go off the edge. Sometimes I remember to do that, sometimes I don't. And if I don't remember to go off the edge, then some, I'll usually just pick one color and go all the way around just for that un uniformity. I'm going to clean this brush out because I want to start with that fresh color. Gotta work fairly fast because you know acrylic um, if you are going to get into painting seascapes I do re re well, I do think that you should buy what's called a retarder um, it's an acrylic retarder and basically it slows the drying time and you just mix it in with your paints and they almost become like a water paint or water paint like an oil paint where oil paints just uh, Take forever to dry but the great thing about it is you can blend and blend and blend and come back to it when you work on something else come back to it and blend it and that's a really nice aspect to oils but so is that um, paint what did you call it sorry it's called a acrylic paint retarder uh, okay but acrylic paint like retarder. or slow drying or slow medium. drying medium so where would you find that uh, Michael's should have it okay uh, you can find it online. Uh, a lot of the paints I buy are found on Amazon too. Okay. Michael's Amazon. So uh, fairly easily accessible. Yes, you betcha. Alright. I'm just going to carve again with my flat edge here. I'm using my one inch brush. If you got a smaller brush, that's fine too. So once you get here, what you're going to do is you're just working back and forth. You're keeping your paintbrush right in the middle of that line. You don't want to start going up and down because what's going to happen is it's going to pull those values and it's going to just be muddy. So just work that here until it's fairly blended and then wipe your brush off. A lot of times when I when I first started painting I would uh, I would get restless and I wouldn't ru wipe my brush off while I was blending and then that's where you start getting into trouble. Start with a clean brush when you're going into different areas. All right. What you could do is just have a blender brush on hand so just grab yourself uh, another brush and just blend blend with this brush instead of having to wash out the brush that you're using. All right, so we're banding in that color. I think I'm going to add a little bit more of this color on the bottom. And a little less there, that's okay. A lot of this is... <clears throat> 
working back and forth from light to dark. That's that's a lot of acrylic painting. You go back and forth from light to dark um, with your your blocking in, and then your medium shape, your shaping, and then your details. I lost a little bit of my dark here, so I'm going to put it back in. I can add some more dark and light as I go. I just want the general locking in. And again, come in with that blender brush. My blender brush is dirty. So it's pointless to have a dirty blender brush because you want that nice, crisp, clear brush to help you blend things in. Otherwise, it's just pulling colors from all over the place. All right. Let's, let's clean off our brush here. What I am going to do is add a little bit of this, this color right here in here. That's your sky color? This is my, well, this is my ocean background. Your background, color. sorry, your, your background mm -hmm. ocean color. So I have, this is kind of coming up and over and it's showing us kind of what's underneath the water. It's giving me, and the light that's coming through where this part is starting to settle again. And so it's going to reflect the sky again. And that's why I want to add in some of those values just right in here. Tell I'm adding a little bit too much water. While this is still wet, I'm just going to work it back and forth until it becomes a nice blend. I'm also going to have some foam down here, so really you're not going to see a lot of this blue in this area, but I do want to represent it here. Here. Good enough. I might actually even have a little bit of the blue in like different areas here, but we'll come in that into that when we do our blending. Did anyone at home painting along have any questions so far? Am I still too quiet? I'm talking to my canvas, so I might be a little bit too quiet. But easy peasy for right now. I'm gonna let that set up just a little bit. I'm gonna go in, clean my brushes. All right. If I use too much water and what happens is it starts to gather in certain places, that's okay. I'm just gonna dab this out because I'm gonna cover this up with foam. Not a big deal. Actually cut. Creates some, some nice texture if you do a little dab with it. That is a nice texture. I like that. Mm -hmm. It's nice to kind of save some time doing those little texture areas. It's always a bunch of little tips and tricks that you can use. All right. Alicia says you're good. Oh, thank y'all. Unless she's talking to you know the camera. <laughs> you're talking to yourself. <laughs> you go girl no it's it's all you amber <laughs> all right okay so now we're going to worry about the direction of what's going on here um i am going to add just a touch of this lighter color in here it's kind of bad it stops right about here and it bands all the way to where that wave starts flapping over so i'm just adding a band of color and then I'm gonna blend. And I'm gonna lighten that probably a little later in the game here. Oh, oh yeah. you're good sound wise, she says. Oh, good. <laughs> good. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you for the feedback, Alicia. <laughs> there we go. Got that nice light band in there. And the camera lady is a rock star. I agree. True facts. 
<laughs> yes. If uh, if those of you at home don't know who our camera lady is, this is Sarah Hawker. She's our event programmer here at the Lindminster Cultural and Science Center. She's also been doing a lot of art programming as of late for the youth. And she's doing an excellent job of that. So if you haven't seen her videos, they should be on our Facebook page. Uh, got a lot of fun arts and crafts with supplies that you would have at home so you can follow along. All right, so it's never done. You always think you you got to the stage where you're gonna move on and then you're like, oh, I see something I wanna change. And such is life with painting. Now, this is starting to get tacky. And if you are a seasoned painter, you'll know that if you go in with paint on top of paint that's not quite dry, it's going to pull it up. So, and so just I just want to step in here, and, and by tacky you mean sticky. Sticky. Yeah, yeah not starting quite to dry. get sticky. Yes, right. exactly. So I'm just going to be careful with that. I want to. I'm going to go in with this brush here. This is just a flat edge brush, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start representing some of my different tones in here. I'm going to start with some uh, darker tones. Just getting a little bit of that, too much water, getting a little bit of that dark, wiping it off, and we're going to start edging in some lines here. Some of your direction lines of your some waves. Of my direction lines. Okay. And let's use this guy. Set your reference photo. Um, this is there. a different wave altogether, okay. but right. it was a really good picture of how those lines are represented. So what happens is the wave pulls all this water from here and it comes up and it has it has little um, little troughs and valleys but it's all kind of represented in that straight line here. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go in with some darks here and in this wave again our, we're kind of coming up like this so we're gonna start kind of laying down here I have that color represented in here. And again, it, it's going to be a little tricky until that paint dries underneath. And I just want to, I'm just going to kind of dab it in there. And let's wipe the blend it through. I'm using my dark value here. I'm and just pulling um, it down into mm -hmm. this nude color. And if folks at home are finding that their painting is lifting from their palette, from their canvas a little bit because their paint is getting um, tacky, you can pause the video now and, and maybe get a, a blow dryer. Um, and a coffee. And a coffee. <laughs> or, uh, I mean, a wine. It is, it is the afternoon. Um, <laughs> and let that paint dry. And then um, when the dry, paint is dry, you can resume again with this mm -hmm. portion of the painting. Absolutely. All right, so what I'm gonna do, what I do is in my mid-tones here, I'm going to use, my darks are going to be my dark color. And so it's kind of flat, kind of stuff like this. Flat, kind of stuff like this. So you're just representing those lines. almost comes a little bit vertical up here so I'm not going past my dark the reason being is I don't want this much of a dark in this much of a light I want to actually use my mid tone to make this shadow here if that makes any sense so I have my darks here I'm just going to blend them out just a tad. So if you remember that brush I was talking about where it kind of has a harder edge, it's like a hog hair brush. I'm just going to tap it just a little bit, just break it down a little bit. I might get it touch wet, but I want it clean. It's a little bit too wet. Water and acrylics 
are great, but just a touch can really change the quality of your acrylic. So you're just knocking those back a little bit. Nice and light touch. Just knocking those back. Okay, and then I can add in more of my dark here just to blend that out. Okay. If I want to do a shadow in here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add just a touch of black to that. I'm gonna follow the line I already created and have it follow all the way into here. Just referencing where, how it's going to go here. And before that dries, I'm just going to blend those together. So you have a kind of have that continuous line flowing and you get those transitions. It's like a shadow within a shadow and that's why you're kind of making sure that you have those colors represented properly. And you see what I mean by it lifting. I'm just going to add some of my darker value back into here. All right, back here. All right. We'll come back to that. Okay, so I'm going to wash my brush out and we're going to work up here and we're going to use the shadow of we're gonna make the shadow from the mid-tone. So this is our lighter value. We're gonna use our mid-tone to make the shadow. I'm not sure how we're doing for time, but you're good still. We're doing great. I just picked up my very light color for some reason. There we go. We need our mid-tone here. Again, if you have a spray bottle, Remember to give it a little bit of a mist, keep them nice and wet so you don't start working with dry paint or just spritz it with your hands if you have to. Okay, so here, I'm just gonna follow that line. It's almost too light. There we go. I don't want too much on my brush. I'm gonna follow those lines we already created. almost actually going like this. Let's just change that direction. A little too dark. Or too light, I'm sorry. There we go, that's better. There it goes. Okay, and then while that's still wet, try to make sure your blending brush is While that's still wet, I'm gonna kind of blend this area in just a little bit. All right, and you get all sorts of little blips and blobs in here, so we can just kind of blend it in like this. You still have those lines represented, but you knock them back quite quite a bit, and you blend it. We'll knock those guys back. We're not the star of the show. All right. Is this dry enough now? There we go. All right. Blend that out. Blending, painting, blending, painting. You notice I kind of, I didn't really go into this area because I should actually, because there is a transparency to the wave when it flaps over, but it's not going to be as apparent as this area here. So I am going to, ah, too much water. I am going to do the same in here, but I don't have to get as detailed. I just want to represent those shadows in there too. Just blending out the edges almost vertical because it's coming up that 
You can also put a darker band right along. We're going to go right along the top here. We're going to bring in a darker band, just a mix of that mid tone and that dark tone. And what this is, is the shadow from that foam, that crest that comes up. And that's the shadow that that's going to cast. So I'm, I'm using any old brush really, but you can use, you can use a round brush or a flat brush just to block that darker color in there. And just create that little bit of a shadow that's going to happen once we add our whites. All right, and then just blend. And again. Just the edge there. Also creates some nice, if you have an abrupt line, you can follow it down all the way if you want. Or you can stop some of the, sometimes they stop midway, but have some that go all the way down and some that stop midway. Be a little bit intentional with it. Okay. So now, I have some nice direction lines going on. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add some highlights to it now. So in this area here, I'm going to represent some lighter areas. So I'm trying to think of where my sun is and where, where you're going to see those light areas and almost like right in, right in the middle of the dark areas. I'm just going to create a faded, faded line. Kind of show that light that's hitting that's hitting this bump here in the middle and then fading back mm. you can move to a smaller brush at this point that might help you just remember that you have if you have an arsenal of paintbrushes use them all because they will help you so again i'm i have my brush with paint and then i have my my blender brush just to, that was a little bit too much. There we go. Use your finger too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm just kind of creating those little lighter areas in here. Blending. And you can already see some of those pockets forming. And because I'm kind of following the lines I already have, it's making sense. So if you just kind of go like this, it's going to be fine, <laughs> but it's also going to um, going to start looking a little bit um, displaced. Okay. All right, and then I'm also going to add a little bit more of that highlight in here. Just a little bit. See those lighter areas? I'm just going to add that highlight in here, right along the edge of those lighter areas. Blend them out. Knock them back. So just using those lines I already placed in there. And pull them down a little bit if you want. Add a little bit maybe here. Some lighter area here. And knock them back. I don't want to go too far down. And there's just kind of water reflecting all in there. So I'm just kind of tapping it a little bit to show some dimension. Okay, I'm going to do the same just in this area too. This is my midtone, so I'm just going to add just a little bit of that light in there. And knock it back. Too much water on there. I just wanted a little lighter in there. I have that issue with using my blender brush as a as a paintbrush. And I switch back and forth sometimes just because I get excited and I want to really put something in there right now. I have very little patience sometimes. 
I have a bad habit of trying to rinse my paintbrush in my coffee cup. Yes. <laughs> I try to keep them as far away as possible because I've done that too many times. Has anybody at home done that? Accidentally tried to rinse your paintbrush in your coffee cup? <laughs> or tried to drink your uh, paint yes. water? Yes, <laughs> that's a big one too. All right. Okay, so I got some of my lights and darks represented in there. Now I just kind of want to look at it, see where I've lost my darks and lost my lights and just kind of add them in there into the little, I need maybe need a little bit more of this paint. So I'm just gonna add some more, that's too light. I need some more phthalo. I'm gonna add a little bit more dark in this area here because I've lost a lot of my shadow but it shouldn't take too long to add that back in because I'm just going to add it in those little troughs if that makes any sense. Add this blue, add some more yellow, just here somewhere, there it is. Yeah, Alicia gets it. <laughs> Mixing up the coffee cup and the water cup. <laughs> Maybe a little bit of black just to darken that up. So I have a Mars black, but whatever black you guys have is fine. Green. Oh, carbon black. There's all sorts of black. I like to keep my colors fairly simple, so if I need to mix them again, I'm not sitting there like, what did I do? Mm -hmm. All right. So again, I'm just adding a little more of that dark because this whole area is almost pitch black. And as I go over these areas, I don't want to completely cover them up, but I do want to establish that dark again and then I'm going to blend them out. Let's get another brush because I have, all my blending brushes are full of paint. So I'm just going to grab another brush before this dries. Let me just knock this back a little bit again. Okay. Add a little bit more dark here. Add a little bit of water in there, following those lines, and then blending them out. Just a touch of water just to help smooth that paint out. There we go. Oh, it starts flattening out a little bit here. All right, add some more darks. Um, a little more dark in there. That's creating some nice texture in there. I'm gonna add a couple little bit of little blobs in here. Cause in my uh, in the original picture, it's kind of coming up and it's almost dancing and has little bumps going on. So I'm just representing those with little dabs of my of my paintbrush and then I smooth them out with my blending brush. Hope I'm not being too erratic for you guys. I tend to, <laughs> I go back and forth quite a bit um, with different areas. Just as I have the color, I wanna make sure that I'm hitting those areas so I'm not going back and forth with different colors all the time. All right, and then I just blend it up. So just let us know if you need anything um, gone over one more time or give us a thumbs up if you're doing all right at home. There we is, go. Is uh, blobs the technical term? Yes. Uh, yes, it is. <laughs> yes. You should know that by now, Alicia. Yeah, come on now. <laughs> <laughs> Ha <laughs>
Um, yeah, I can't even think right now of the proper term. So yes, it is. <laughs> Add a little bit more blue in there. There we go. Blendy blend. That's looking very much like an ocean wave. Good job. Thank you. All right. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just add a little bit of blue in here, and I'm almost using a wash. And so what a, what a wash is, is is when you add a lot of water to your brush. And I'm just going to add in a whole area of blue in there. That has to show a little bit of reflection of the sky. Maybe a little bit transparency up, up here. I can use a blending brush or I can use my finger. Let's wash one of these blending brushes, shall we? I think I have three. I'll just dirty it up a little bit and then I'm just gonna dry it off. Just gonna represent some of that um, color in the background that's coming through it because this is translucent here. Put some of that in there, lay it in. Just subtle. It's not very subtle, is it? You can knock it back a little bit with a blending brush so it is more subtle. Okay, cool. More of the blue just here and there. Gives it some nice dimension. It's gonna represent this kind of coming from the wave and down over. Just blend that out. This right here is still kind of dark, but that's going to be our shadow from where the wave cuts over. All right, not too worried about this area because again, I'm gonna add some foam right here so it's, it's gonna be covered. But this underpainting is gonna kind of shine through which is make a kind of a cool effect. All right, so here's the wave. Uh, this is what we got. I think I'm gonna stop there. And what we're gonna start doing is we're gonna make some of the whites in there. I think I can save, I can do one palette if I just work with the whites right here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, while this dries, I'm going to let it dry a little bit. I'm going to clean out my brushes. We'll take a closer look at the uh, earlier painting you did and some of the photos of waves. Yes, and absolutely. Uh, give folks at home maybe a chance to let their canvases dry a little while you're washing your brushes and rinsing your water. Perfect. Thank you. And this is a good chance if anyone at home has any questions about the painting today, um, any questions for Amber uh, so far, this would be a great time to hop on while she's just uh, washing out her brushes and changing her water. Okay. I hope you guys had a chance to clean your brushes or grab a coffee. What I'm going to do, I'm not going to start with a pure white. What we're going to do is we're going to use that pure white to accent certain areas and really make them pop. What we're going to do for the other areas is we're going to make kind of a dirtied um, bluish white. And it's going to look like shadow areas of that foam. Hmm. 
best brush to use. Just go in with this round brush here. Maybe even the, t uh, the textured one. And I just want to take a little bit of that white and I'm going to dirty it up. Really, it doesn't matter which one you choose. I would go for maybe mid-tone, you can choose blue. I'm just gonna darken that up there. Yeah. So I'm gonna use this color. And the same idea, you have your dark, your mid, and your light. So I'm gonna start off this color right here. And I'm just gonna map it in. So I think it's gonna come in. You don't you don't have to do a line. I do suggest just doing broken dots here. You're gonna come up, it breaks off a little here. I'm going to use this hump that we created to to make it uh, make what is that called? The crest of the wave. The crest of the wave. I was gonna call it a flap. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, so I'm just adding those areas in. A little bit thicker here. All right, it starts coming down. Maybe a little bit thicker here. I'm gonna have certain areas that come down and go up on this part. And you're gonna go, you're gonna actually overlap a little bit onto the ocean area here. And once we're all done, there's gonna be so much spray and, and um, little misty bits that this is going to be covered. All right, a little more in here. I'm, I'm also gonna take this color. I might use a one inch brush. Just dip it in there a little bit, wipe it off a little bit so dry, dryish brush. Sorry, I use my hand quite a bit. <laughs> okay, I got it to where I want it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start, not at the very top, but fairly close, and I'm just gonna create these lines coming down. So that's the water that's rushing down. I don't wanna get rid of all of my color under there. I spent a lot of, not a lot of time, but I spent some time on that. But I do want to wash that off, wash that out a little bit, and that's creating that effect of it mm. swooping down. All right, what kind of my darker areas in here? Figure out where I want them darker. Okay, so mapped out where we where we have our wave here, and let's add some volume. Once we add, start adding in our different shades of white. Just gonna add a little bit more volume. We're going to go right along this area here. It's gonna be a little bit lighter. I don't know if you can see that represented. You'll probably see it better while you're at home. But I'm just gonna go into here. I'm gonna start coming up a little bit with this lighter color, just dabbing in those areas. Maybe it comes up a little bit like this. <laughs> I was taking a, a page from Bob Ross there. If you ever watch him do an ocean scene, he just makes all sorts of ocean noises. <laughs> he says, if you don't make the noises, it doesn't work. That's kind of going in. And then we can also do from here some upswipes. You want to have, don't have a lot of paint on your brush, but you want to have those little areas where your water is kind of splashing up. And it's even coming up all the way up here. Don't be afraid of this. This here, it's 
kind of fun and cool. This is the part where you get to be a little bit free. Okay, so I got that area. I want to represent a couple of those oops, little splashes in there. So I'm gonna maybe take a smaller brush. These are the same. But I can add just a tiny, don't want as much paint on there. Just those splashes that are coming up, I wanna represent in some dots. If you really wanna get detailed, you can grab your detail brush and just do a little bunch of little dots here. But if you have a nice textured brush, that'll help just to block in those little dots. See, I'm still keeping the color there, but I can cover it quite a bit with my dots and my wisps. Add some more dots over here, a bit splashing, maybe paint down a little bit here. Add a little bit more color in there. All right, you get the idea. Get some more splashes in there. Cover up that background. Cool. All right. So now, here's the money, sh money shot here. We're going to add in that pure white. So hopefully you can see this at home, the difference. So I'm not adding it everywhere. I'm kind of adding it on the edges here. Maybe some right here. Some areas here. more in here just where you already established some of that those thicker blobs yes blobs <laughs> just go in and highlight that with your thicker white or with your pure white add a couple up here little splashes fun Maybe add a little bit right here, coming down. All right, so you can deal, detail that till the cows come home. I'm just going to maybe just add a little bit of foam in here. Just be brave. Don't want a lot. Okay. Yeah, here she goes. Look, it's a wave. Okay. So what I'm going to do right here to represent that foam, I already have that nice blue color in there. I'm going to, if you don't have a gray, just mix some white and some black. I'm going to add some gray to my palette. Here's some gray. And we uh, mix a little white into it. And have some white in there. Actually, quite a bit of white. Oh, there's another pile of white. I'm just going to make that. Actually, I'm going to use the tip of my brush here. I'm not going in like this. I'm going in like this. I'm just adding. The whole bottom part is going to be that gray. And it's kind of bubbly, so I'm just dabbing in the top a little bit. Maybe a little more here. I don't want it to be a straight line. I just want it to be kind of bubbly where you have that foam coming in there. Okay. We still have... You can see a little bit of the blue underneath, which kind of gives it some depth. 
It's not a lot, but you can still see it. And really with this, it's, it's not very detailed, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with a little bit of pure white and I'm just going to dab into it like this, create some of those bubbles in those pockets. Dab and drag. Areas in here are being pulled up. I'm going to follow one of those lines I already established. All right, maybe go in with some of that artist white there just to really make it pop. Yeah, you can go in with a round brush and, and uh, get a little bit of that dark blue and a little bit of black. And just do the odd little divot in there. Little spots are going to represent little pockets. Again, the focus is the wave, and so this is just kind of the little extra. I'm noticing as I get to the end of my painting, I'm noticing that in here I need to blend out some color in here just to really get that represented. Too much. Knock it back with a wet brush. Too much. Just gonna take some off with a clean wet brush. Oh, of course, use your fingers. Bring in some of that dark color. There we go. And I'm moving those areas. I just want to show that the water is coming in that direction. Somehow I picked up some black on there. That's okay. We can blend. Actually creates kind of a cool look. I like it. There. I'm creating that flow. Cool. What do you guys think? Did you, how are you guys doing? I mean, even actually, I'm going to go with some thicker blobs in here. Actually, give it some real texture. Mm -hmm. It's actually coming right off. That's my favorite. Any questions from our viewers? At home about the process so far, about the waves, the the foam, or anything else about the painting so far. This will be available on our Facebook page after we are done filming. So, um, you, as you're going along, uh, you will be able to post your questions if you have any, um, and we will be around to answer any questions and of course we do want to see pictures of your completed artwork so please post those questions those pictures and we do have our virtual art show coming up so if you do an uh, a wave painting and you would like to submit that then you can go to lodminster.ca slash submit art and fill out the form and uh, upload a picture of your artwork mm -hmm. and we'll include it in our um online exhibition. So I'm just coming in here kind of creating some pockets. So a wave doesn't go like this like you learn in uh, learn in elementary school to actually kind of up and down like this. 
I'm not going to get too crazy into how to do this part of the waves because it's actually its own technique. But we're just creating some offset pockets of shadow here. It's kind of like the undertow. Yeah, we just want to, we don't, it's not completely, not completely flat. I'm just adding a little bit of bumps, little tiny waves. There we go. All right. And perhaps now it's a little bit of a signature right here. And And there, she is. and there we are. There is Ocean Waves by our talented programmer, Amber Fast. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, I would love to see your pictures if you do end up doing this. And like I said, if you have questions uh, and you're not on the live right now, uh, just put them in the comments and I'll watch it for a few days for sure and answer any questions that you have. Till then, stay creative. Thanks for joining me.